Got him. We just pooped all over my boat. More rats. Yeah, boat looks a little different, doesn't it? We got the marsh hen going. So, uh, this is the first boat that I ever built from scratch. This thing was a stack of plywood and a roll of fiberglass when I started. Um, just got this new uh, 35 horse on it. It's actually a military motor designed for the seals to be able to drop out of airplanes. It can be submerged up to 400 feet for four days and then bring it to the surface. It's got a plug to drain the water out on it and it'll fire right up. It's a pretty sweet motor. So, got out here, just wanted to test the boat. I hadn't fished in a while, so I jumped on a sheep head. I'm gonna take him home for dinner. What I wanna talk to you guys about today is tides. Georgia, yeah, Georgia tides. We'll say we've got the strongest tides in that range of speckled trout and redfish. Anywhere from a six and a half to a 10 foot tide, depending on the moon. The moon is what decides how big or how small the tide is, when the high tide is, when the low tide is. It all revolves around the moon. Um, the wind can adjust that. If you've got a strong west wind or a strong east wind, it can adjust, you know, change when high tide and when low tide is. It can also change the actual forecasted height of the tide. So whether it's a zero or a plus or, or a negative tide, the wind can blow the tide out further than it's supposed to or blow it in further than it's supposed to. Um, so that's how your tide and your wind and your moon all kind of tie together. Uh, your moons have your bigger tides, which also have stronger currents. So if we're on a big moon, we're going to have strong currents. This means I want to look for wide open, shallow water uh, areas to fish because the current isn't as strong in those areas. It also means that if I'm in this deep channel like it is right through here with a lot of current, you look for your eddies, you look for your current seams and you go in and you get to where the current folds back on itself or, or starts a swirl. Um, you can get your bait to the bottom in those areas and you'll find that the fish also like to hang out in those areas as ambush points. They'll sit in the slack current let the tide push bait past them and jump out and pick it off so don't miss out on fishing your your moons some of your best fish are caught prior to a new moon and full moon at, you know as it's coming up on the moon um so lunar has a a play in that that's your sun your moon and all of that tied in together um the closer you are to your moons the bigger a factor so lunar is if you're in between the moons, it's not that big of a factor. Uh, the fish will kind of feed all day, you know, depending on the other variables like barometer and, and all of that stuff. So you can also use Navionics to find out what the current's doing in the area you're fishing. Find out what the tide's doing in the area you're fishing. Um, your tides are charted at mean low water. That means the average of all of the low waters over the past, I think four years, is what your tides are charted at. So if you look on a chart and it says six foot, that means at the average low water height, you've got six foot of water there. Now that may change over the years. They don't update it every year. So you have to watch it if it's a place where there's lots of sandbars and shoals those will particularly change, especially if we have big storms. Um, so if you look at your chart, you can see what your low water height is going to be. Now, if you're on a moon and it says you're at a negative 0.5 tide, 
that means that you're half a foot lower than what your average low water is, what mean low water is. So that'll tell you what your tide's gonna be that day in that area. If the wind's blowing out of the west, you can go ahead and count on it being lower than that half a foot because the wind's gonna blow the tide out further than what is reported. So if the wind's blowing from the east, you may have a higher tide than what is reported because the tide, that wind can hold the tide in. So um, that's, that's basically tides. How do you fish them? That's what you're all wondering, right? It's like, okay, we know the moon makes the tide go up and down every day, twice, you know, twice a day. Let me get over to this bank over here and I'll give you some examples. your tides relate to your spots that you fish I call this little spot two trout because I usually can pull up bust off two trout real quick and then you don't really catch much else but if you'll notice you've got a drain coming out of the marsh right here all right it's pretty much already drained out so you may have a few fish hanging out out here at the mouth of it but you don't want to fish this spot now. You want to fish this spot just as the water's at the grass line. So you've still got plenty of water moving out of this drain, plenty of bait coming out of the grass out of this drain, and the fish will set up at the mouth and feed. Tide levels, how this relates to level of the tide, and I'm not saying stage of the tide because that's different. There's trout moving right through here. There's fish here. So, um, this area, good Lord, all the little turtles, is like a shelf and then it drops off right here into the channel. So when the tide's up high, the fish are gonna be up on top of the shelf. You may have a few run in the channel, but most of them that are feeding are gonna come up on top of the shelf into the shallower water where the bait's at. All right, as those ditch, those drains are, are dumping out, you're gonna have the fish staging up at these marsh drains up on top of this, this flat. All right, so if you're in an area and the tips of these shells are just sticking up and you're wearing the fish out, take note of the level of the water. All right, not the tide stage, the level of the water. Remember how you're fishing it at that point. So the fish, as the tide falls, will stage out on the nearest structure that's shallow enough for the bait to hold in. So once it gets low tide, these shells are gonna be all exposed. So the fish are clearly not gonna be there because there's no water there. They're gonna be on this shell line running this because that's the, the nearest structure to the bank for them to work bait on, all right? So as the tide's coming up, if you're catching fish and it shuts off, you may need to look for the nearest structure up and move up so that you're getting into where the fish are, st are feeding at, all right? So what I'm telling you is take note of the water level when you're catching fish in a spot. Once that water level has sufficiently changed and the bite changes, Think about where the fish may have moved up to to stage at, all right? Sometimes you can extend your bite by moving up the bank or, or whatever. You know, you just have to look at the area and figure out where the structure is, what's exposed, at what point in the tide, and learn your spots, all right? You'll know you want to hit that, you know, there may be one piece of structure in that area and the fish are holding on that structure at that tide and then they're moving out the creek after that. So 
they may be gone after that but that one particular area is a hot spot when it's hot and it's hot because of the water level in that spot if you check if the water level changes the baits no longer holding there the fish are going to move you've got to think about where they move to so that's how you fish your tides all right if they're holding in a spot at dead high tide between the moons but then you're on a moon that has a a, a a a 10 foot tide where we were at a six foot tide you know seven foot tide there's three foot of difference of water level in that spot at high tide the fish may not be there they may be up in the grass on a flat or you know holding on some dock structure and deeper water you know you, you've got to think about the water level as it relates to the structure that you're fishing and that changes based on your moons because you're going to have bigger tides on your moons slacker tides between your moons your tide level at that spot will be different at the exact same tide stage so you've got to play it out by pay attention to the level of the tide and take note of your spots when they're hot at what level you can even look on navionics while you're fishing at that spot and say okay we're at 3.8 feet right now take a note in your little journal the fish are hot here at 3.8 feet so now you know you can go back to that spot whenever your tide's coming close to four feet or so and start getting set up and fishing you know just uh that's ways of, of using the tools to, to put you in the fish at the right time. What's your tide doing? What's your water doing? How fast is it moving? What level is it at? What structure is exposed? What structure is submerged? How are they holding on it? Is the current too fast to fish it? Is the current just right? Is there an eddy I can hide in and, and sit in and still catch fish while the current's ripping? All of those things are things that you have to consider and it helps you figure out where you want to start your day at, how you want to plan your day, um, what spots you want to move from next because really to consistently catch fish you've got to have a, a bunch of places in your pocket to try and you pick the most likely place first and then you work from there. Um, Nobody, I don't think anybody just goes out and like the fish are here today we're gonna fish right here and just catch this fish uh, they go out and they say oh you know this is how it feels today this is what I'm seeing today on the, the weather I'm gonna try this and then I'm gonna try this and then this doesn't seem like it may work but you never know there may be a variable I'm not thinking about so I'm gonna try this the tides move so I'm gonna move uh, all of those things and you string it along and you put the day, a day together if you go out there with one game plan about hitting one spot at one particular tide and then that flubs on you or the current's too fast or or you can't get in there because the tide's lower than you thought it would be then you're caught twiddling your thumbs you're unprepared you don't know what to do you're not confident in your in your plan you're you're throwing baits willy-nilly you're not retrieving them right because you're not confident in your plan and you don't catch any fish sometimes you just need a plan so that you got confidence so that you'll fish right it's the way it works man it's psychology fishing is a psychological game no doubt um, get your mind right and you'll catch fish put all the rest of it you know on the back burner so i'm about to put this little boat in the wind get back to the dock clean up dinner and uh, we'll catch you guys on the next trip.